pigtail style coupler alignment. Here's your basic setup again. And we're showing the fiber in this case. Again, you have the same flange. The key difference is, here it is, the fiber, and you have the lens at that part point there coming out. That's the part that will be attaching to the flange. But you can see we have the same three tilt screws. We have the same three locking screws. We also have two little set screws on the side, and that's what's actually going to hold that lens assembly in place. We have the same screwdriver for doing the adjustments, for doing the tilt and doing the locking, and we also have a smaller Allen key for doing the uh, set screws. Again, we have our extra screws and washers and stuff. Now, if you order uh, what's known as an alignment kit from us, you will also get what's known as a centering lens, and you will also get a multi-mode patch cord assembly. So here we go. We're going to just attach our coupler onto the end of our uh, laser again. And again, it's the same principle. It just threads right on. From a practical standpoint, you'll want to put it on so that those screws are easily accessible, you know, pointing up more or less. And then just sort of retain it in place. So we have our beam coming out. Now because we have no lens, we're just seeing the small laser spot on the screen. So this is where the centering lens comes in. And it's basically a little piece that has a lens on it. We've got it covered here with a cap. So we're just going to take the caps off. So there's the piece. And it just slides right into the hole that our fiber is going to fit in. Once you've done that, you now can do the same centering on the screen and you get the same effect coming out. You actually see the expanded beam. You can see those, the light strike in the side. And by adjusting it, you can center the optics. You can center the barrel of this device so you get the best coupling efficiency. Once you have it, just slide it up, and you're ready to put in the fiber. So here we are. We're going to put the fiber with the lens in. And we lock it with the locking screws, the little set screws rather. And you do both of them. Once it's secure, in this case I happen to get already some light coming out. But the principle here is the same. You're adjusting the three screws to optimize the amount of light coming through, and to also get as small as beam as possible on the screen. And you do it in a methodical fashion going from screw one to two and three, adjusting them back and forth until you get the optimum position. Again, confirm that the gap between the devices is smaller than the size of the thickness of the screw. That will ensure that you have decent pressure going through. In this case, I found that I had to tighten it a little bit. Now I have it at the thickness that I want. The gap is good, so I've got uniform resistance. What I'm doing right now is I've taken out the multi-mode fiber and I put it in the single-mode fiber. And I'm getting a little bit of light out. And as I adjust it, the signal doesn't seem to get much brighter here. And I'm looking at it, if I was hooking this up to a meter, I'd be saying, gee, I'm only getting a couple of percent coupling. Instead of getting you know, the 50, 60 percent I expect, I'm only getting a small fraction of that. I'm getting only a couple percent. 
what's going on. When you focus light to a small spot, you often don't get a perfect uniform spot. Instead, you get a small spot which has smaller rings going around the outside of it. It's what's known as an airy disk. Instead of getting something that looks like this, you get, in fact, something that looks a little bit more like this. Or if I was looking at it end on, there'd be this nice, bright central region, and then a fainter ring around the outside. Now, this is true not only for the uh, pigtail style, but for all couplers. If you're adjusting the tilt, and, here's your, and you have your fiber core, and the fiber core happens to land here. You start getting light from this airy disk coupled into the fiber. Now, when I move it this way, the light gets fainter. If I move it this way, because I'm going into the dip, the light gets fainter. If I move it this way, the light gets fainter. If I go this way, the light gets fainter. So it looks like that I've just hit the maximum coupling efficiency, and it's horrible. But if I kept moving in this direction, my coupling efficiency would improve. And you see this here. As I move it in and out, first I'm getting just this very weak signal. And then, when I adjust it quite a bit more, in a second, and basically, you kind of had to guess. You had to start at one screw, second, th third screw. And there I've got it. Now, you will find that you still probably had to do the lateral adjustment, moving things up, down, left, right, like before, to get the optimum coupling efficiency. The rest of the process is exactly the same in terms of using the locking screws to lock it tweaking it to get the maximum coupling efficiency. Everything we covered in the first bit applies here. So what you know from connector style alignment also applies for pigtail style alignment. Now we're going to do something a little bit more advanced now. We've been talking about just alignment, but what about with polarization maintaining fibers? Okay. And with polarization maintaining fibers, you had to adjust not only the maximum coupling efficiency, you also had to adjust the polarization axis of the fiber to be aligned with whatever source you're working with. Here's the basic equipment you're going to be dealing with. We've aligned the, cup, the fiber to get the maximum coupling efficiency like we did in the last. Also, we haven't locked it. Okay? We've only aligned it. We haven't locked it. And the reason for that is that we're going to be doing further adjustments. But we have what's called a polarization analyzer here, which is essentially a polarizer on a little rotatory disk. By turning that knob, we can adjust the polarization angle, and we can read the angle it's set at. We also now have a power meter. The fiber plugs into the polarization analyzer. This is the manual method. You can also do this with an extinction ratio meter, but I thought I'd show you the manual method here. And when we plug the fiber in, now we have a lot more power. But as I rotate this, the power, the power changes. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm rotating it. I'm trying to get the maximum signal here. Positive is higher power. Negative is lower power. When I get what I think is the maximum power, I'm pressing the button, which is called the reference button, to set that power level to be my 0 dB, referencing it. Once I have that, you'll find that as you rotate this, you're blocking more and more of the light, and the power starts going down on your meter. How stable is that? The key thing is to remember to apply pressure, either through temperature or, uh, in this case, just the heat from my hand. And as I do that, this number starts fluctuating, fluctuating quite a lot. And now it's dropped down to, we saw it go drop down to 22. It's bouncing up and down all over the place, and it dropped as low as like 16, 17, which is not as good as what it should be. It's below specs. Now, by adjusting this a little bit, I'm trying to optimize it. I'm trying to see if I can get that number to be a little bit better. And I go back and I press my hand on here to apply stress. But it didn't get better. In fact, it got worse. I'm only getting like 16 dB. 
So now you need to adjust the alignment. You loosen those two screws here, and you rotate a little bit, and then tighten it again. Now, when I did that, my power dropped quite significantly. It dropped down from the initial reading down to something like minus 40. And that's because as I adjusted these screws, my alignment went off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate the polarizer so I get as much light as possible through and then adjust my coupling efficiency to get the signal back. So here's my signal. It's only about minus 25 dB, but I'm now going to back to adjust my tilt here. And I start at one screw, then the second screw, and now my signal is starting to come back. I see it coming back to like minus 16. Go to the third screw, adjust it first one way, then the other. And I'm now getting quite a bit of signal. Go back to my first screw. I'm getting my signal back again. And in fact, as I adjust it, I'll find I'm even seeing a higher signal than what I did before. Now the odds are that the first time you do this, you're going to go the wrong way. So in fact, your extinction ratio, instead of becoming better, will become worse. So you will adjust and tweak and adjust and tweak, and you'll see, oops, I'm only getting 13 dB or something like that. So then you'll have to go back, loosen those screws, and move it in the opposite direction. Now this is very fine movement we're talking about. We're talking about moving it a couple of degrees in one direction or the other direction. So it needs a bit of a, a good hand on this. And it'll probably take you by trial and error about three or four times to get this done. Once you do have it, you'll find that when you rotate, you'll get your extinction ratio coming up, and you'll get those high values again. But more importantly, when you stress the fiber now, that signal won't fluctuate as much. It's gone down, but well, it's only gone down now to about 25 dB. Once you have your polarization optimized, you can now go back, do a little bit of tweaking in your tilt, and also go back to adjust your locking screws and lock everything up. It's the same principle again. You bring the, 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 the screws in until they just touch. Then you tighten each one by about a quarter of a turn. Again, you can see my power dropped off dramatically when I tilt adjusted the first screw. But now if I go back to, the, to doing all three screws, my power is recovered. I'm back up to, a low, to, to almost my original signal again. It's less than the dB off from where I was going for. Again, I'm trying to get that number as high as possible. And as you see, as I do the fine adjustment on these locking screws, I improve that number. A little bit at a time. And I get this number back almost precisely to where it was before. Okay? So doing this, I can get very low, uh, very good alignment, good extinction ratios, low losses, repeatable results.